to my channel. My name is Basi Eka. Before I continue with the topic, we are quickly going to do a, a quick rundown of what we are going to learn today. So at the end of this class, we are expected to know the meaning of wave and what a progressive wave is and then the types of progressive waves under transverse and longitudinal waves. Then we are also going to talk about the properties of waves. We are also going to talk about properties of waves under the following reflection, refraction, diffraction, interference, and polarization. We are also going to to talk about practical applications of polaroids, their uses, the uses of polaroids, the application. And then the laws of reflection and refraction would be discussed. Critical angle and total internal reflection and their application. So the question now is, what is a wave? But before I continue, when you throw a stone inside water, what do you observe? You see that ripples are being generated. As you can see in the figure here, the circular line here represents the spreading away of energy vibrations. Energy that those lines represent the transfer of of energy through the medium, and the medium there is water. So what you observe is that the medium will only vibrate, so water will only vibrate, but is not part of the motion. Let's see what we have here. When we throw a stone in, into a pool of water, circular waves form and move outward. So when we throw a stone inside a pool of water, we have circular waves as we have seen on the screen here. All right. When a rope or cord is stretched out and then we vibrate one end back and foot, waves are produced. So you see the rope here, the cord, when it is being vibrated. So you see this arrow here pointing up and down which signifies wave vibration, and you see the movement of energy being propagated through the medium. Okay, with this example, we will come down to the meaning of wave. So the question is, what is a wave? A wave is a disturbance that travels through a medium, transferring energy from one point to another without causing any permanent displacement of the medium. So a wave is a disturbance. That's how it is being defined in physics. It is a disturbance that travels through a medium, transferring energy from one point to another without causing any permanent displacement of the medium. The basic types of waves include mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. So we have some types of waves. Well, the basic ones here include mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. Okay, let's continue. Not all waves require a material medium for their propagation. Waves that require material medium for their propagation are called mechanical waves. So it is not all the waves that require material medium for their propagation. Those ones that require material medium for them to be propagated are called mechanical waves. Examples of mechanical waves include sound wave, wave on the string or rope, and water waves. 
Electromagnetic waves are those waves which do not require the material medium for their propagation. So those waves that do not require material medium for their propagation are called electromagnetic waves. Examples of electromagnetic waves include the light waves, X-ray, gamma ray, radio wave, to mention this. A few. I hope you know that we have other forms of electromagnetic waves, but I just choose to say briefly about this few. Okay, let's move quickly to the next point, which is a progressive wave. You don't call it a progressive wave, you call it a traveling wave. What is a progressive wave? It's simply a wave that spreads away from a source. A progressive wave is one that transfers energy in traveling or moving away from the source of disturbance. So these are examples of progressive waves. So you see the way these waves are being so you see how the waves are spreading away from the source. You can just take that as a simple example of a progressive wave. Okay, let's go to types of progressive waves. There are two types of progressive waves. We have the transverse and the longitudinal wave. So we are going to understand in the course of this study, we are going to understand what they mean by a transverse wave and what they mean by a longitudinal wave. So before I continue, I just want us to, to look at this picture. You see the A here, we have the transverse wave, and then the B here represents the longitudinal wave. So when you look at the figure, you will see the direction of the wave is in is to the right hand side. And you can see this amplitude here representing the displacement. So the displacement here is perpendicular to the direction of travel of this wave. But in the longitudinal wave, you can see the direction of vibration and also the direction of the wave velocity they travel parallel to the source of vibration. So those are the differences we are going to observe in the course of our study. In the transverse wave, the wave propagates in the horizontal direction, whereas the medium is disturbed in the vertical direction. So you now see that in the transverse wave, the medium is being disturbed in the vertical direction but the wave moves in a horizontal direction. In a transverse wave, the wave may propagate in any direction, but the disturbance of the medium is perpendicular to the direction of propagation. All electromagnetic waves are transverse waves. All electromagnetic waves a transverse wave. When we say electromagnetic wave, they are those waves that do not require material medium for their propagation. You see the X-ray, the visible light, the infrared, the radio wave, and all of that. Okay. For a longitudinal wave, the disturbance is parallel to the direction of propagation. For example, of longitudinal wave include the sound wave. Okay. Let's go down quickly and you see the next figure here. So we have the crest and then the lowest part of uh, this wave here is the trough. So this is the direction of displacement. And then the arrow here represents the direction of the traveling wave. Okay. 
This one represents the longitudinal wave. So the longitudinal wave have the following properties. So you now see compression here and then refraction. You now see compression here, refraction, compression. If we look at the second figure here, you really understand. So you see that the, the molecules here are closed apart. So this is the area where we have compression. At this point, the molecules are closed apart. And then the refraction, you have expansion. If you don't call it refraction, you call it expansion, compression, expansion, and all of that. So where you have the compression is similar to where you have the crest in, in a, a transverse wave. And then where you have the refraction or the expansion is similar to where you have the trough in a transverse wave. Okay. I hope you're following what I'm trying to say. All right. The next thing we are going to look at is polarization. Polarization. But before I continue, I want us to just look at this very figure here, figure 24.25. You now see this is an unpolarized light traveling in all directions. And the B here shows that that light has been polarized. Of course, you know, light is a wave. It has been polarized. So it is now made to travel only in one plane. So you see the figure here representing polarization. This one says a, schema a schematic diagram. Figure 2.0, uh, figure 24.24 here represents a schematic diagram of a polarized electromagnetic wave propagating in the X direction. So you see the X axis here. So it shows an electromagnetic wave which is being polarized. Mm -hmm. the, the wave is traveling in, in that plane. Okay, let's see what we have here. Polarization of light. What is polarization? The wave is said to be plane polarized if its vibrations occur only in one plane. The wave is said to be plane polarized if its vibrations occur only in one plane. This plane is called the plane of polarization. How can light be polarized? Let's go down. We will see another figure here. This one shows unpolarized light. So you see the arrow here showing us unpolarized light passing through the polarized P. The moment it passed through the polarized, you see that the light began to travel just in the vertical direction, just in one plane. So, see the same thing here. Now, we pass through the next polar right Q. You can see that the light is still in that direction, but this one was being rotated. At this point, the light could not pass through to the other side. It became attenuated because it can only pass through one plane, and that polaroid has been is being rotated. Um, let's go back to this other figure. All right, I think we can move ahead. We have some study questions here for us. This one says. 
which of the following ways can undergo polarization? This is a simple one. Gamma ray, sound waves, water waves, wave on a string. So which of the following ways from what we have discussed so far, I believe we should be able to answer that question. Okay. This other one say, one of the following waves cannot undergo polarization. Gamma rays, sound waves, radio waves, and microwaves. One of the following waves cannot undergo polarization. Okay, so sound wave is a longitudinal wave and as such would not undergo polarization. Okay, let's go to the third question here. Which of these is not a property of longitudinal wave? Longitudinal wave, which of these is not a property of longitudinal wave? So when you come here, you see some properties of longitudinal wave it can be compressed. It has extension, compression, and you also have other properties of wave, like it can reflect and refract, it can interfere and all of that, but it cannot blend polarize. Let's read this again. Each of these is not a property of longitudinal wave. Compression, expansion. In the absence of expansion, you can see something like um, refraction. They mean the same thing. Okay. So don't be confused about that. All right. Um, I think I should continue. The wave can be plain polarized by the use of polarizers such as tourmaline crystal or quartz. The wave can be plain polarized when visible light is made to pass through polaroids such as tourmaline crystal. And what uses of uh, Polaroids. I think that's the best term to use. Applications of Polaroids. Okay. Applications of Polaroids. The following are applications of Polarization. Um, polarization is used in sunglasses. Polarization is used in sunglasses. Very cool windscreen, glass doors, windows to reduce rays of light or beam of light. They reduce glare. What glare means really a beam of light. Okay, so applications of Polaroids. Polaroids are used in sunglasses, vehicle windscreen, glass doors, and windows to reduce glass, to reduce glare, ray of light or beam of light. So they are being applied, they are used in sunglasses, vehicle windscreen, glass doors, glass windows, and all of that to reduce light glare. Polaroid filters are used in plastic industries for performing stress analysis tests. Three-dimensional movies are produced and shown with the help of polarization. Polarization is used for differentiating between transverse 
and longitudinal wave. So polarization is used to differentiate between transverse and longitudinal wave with the help of the polarized. Longitudinal waves would not be plain polarized. It's only the transverse waves that can be plain polarized. The next one we have here is infrared spectroscopy uses polarization. So polarization is being applied in infrared spectroscopy. Polarization is applied in seismology to study earthquake. Let's go through quickly. Let's check the questions, the study questions we have here. This one says, which type of wave cannot be polarized? Which type of waves cannot be polarized? Answer. Longitudinal waves such as sound wave cannot be polarized because the motion of the particle is in one direction. Because the motion of the particles is in one direction. So that's the reason why they cannot be polarized because the motion of the particle is in one direction. This other one says, what is meant by the plane of polarization. What do you understand by the term plane of polarization? A plane in which electromagnetic waves vibrate when it is polarized so as to vibrate in a single line. So that line that you saw here is what they mean by plane of polarization. Okay. Let's go back to our question once again. What is meant by the plane of polarization? A plane in which electromagnetic waves vibrate when it is polarized. So a plane in which electromagnetic wave vibrate when it is polarized is known as the plane of polarization. This question here says, what is a polarizer? What is a polarizer? A polarizer is an optical device that can convert an unpolarized light, that can convert an unpolarized light wave into a polarized light wave by blocking all other vibrations. So a polarizer is a device that converts an unpolarized light to a polarized light. Okay. The other question is, what is an analyzer? What is an analyzer? The answer, an analyzer is an optical device used to determine whether light is plane polarized or not. It is an optical device used to determine whether light is plane polarized or not. Who discovered polarization of light? The French physicist whose name was Etienne Louis. Etienne Malus. Okay. So here you have some study question as well. You just test your understanding. I refused to put um, some options here. You didn't see it to be that necessary. But let's look at let us look at the questions. At least we will learn something from this. This one says, "What is a wave? A wave is a force." that propagates from the place where it was created. This one says, a wave is a disturbance that propagates from the place where it was created. This one says, a wave is a matter that provides volume to an object. This one says, a wave is matter that provides mass to an object. So which option would you choose? 
if you were in an hot seat, maybe you were writing an exam and you come across questions like this, which option would you choose? Let me give you time to think about it. to the next option. Do all waves require a medium to propagate? Explain. Do all waves require a medium to propagate? This one says no. Electromagnetic waves do not require any medium to propagate. I think that's the answer. So I don't need to waste time. Okay. Okay, let's go to the next one. What is a pulse wave? Just read through it and then try to attempt it. What is a wave? Which option would you pick? Do all waves require a medium to propagate? Do all waves require a medium to travel? The next question here says, what is a pulse wave. What is a pulse wave? Let me take you quickly to you. What is a pulse wave? textbook answers that question. The pulse is a sudden increase in magnitude of physical quantity shortly followed by a rapid decrease. Okay, so let me read this. This one says if a stone is dropped into a pool of water in the pond or stream, ripples are seen to form, grow quickly, and die away. The falling stone creates a disturbance of the calm. The falling stone creates a disturbance of the calm water surface and produces ripples. Such ripples are called pulses. A pulse consists of a single crest. A pulse consists of a single crest. Reflection. We have talked about polarization. You can you can recall that in our introduction we we made mention of the properties of waves. Under the properties of waves, we said that we are going to, we were going to talk about polarization, um, reflection, refraction. So we have talked about polarization. Let's quickly go to reflection. So you see, before I continue, you see different figures here which will really explain what we are going to discuss. Okay, so you see the direction of travel of the wave and the moment it got to a smooth boundary, it reflected. So I here represents an incident, uh, angle of incidence, and the R here represents the reflected ray. So at this point, I 
is equal to R. The incident angle is equal to the reflecting angle. Let's see what we have here. The bouncing back of a wave into the same medium when it gets to a boundary. The bouncing back of a wave into the same medium when it gets to a boundary. It could be a regular reflection or diffused reflection depending on the nature of the surface. So if the surface is smooth, the reflection you get becomes regular. Call it regular reflection. But if the surface is rough, you now see the result of it. So this may end up producing a blurred image. We call this diffuse reflection. So let's look at so the figure here still the same thing as the first one here and this represents incident ray the reflected ray and this is the normal so we have theta one theta one that is to say that the angle of incidence is the same as the uh, reflected angle let's quickly go to diffraction this is an introduction class we are not expected to really go deeply but in our next class I, I think we'll pick some of these topics and then we try to break them down accordingly okay um, we have diffraction of waves diffraction of waves the bending around of wave when it gets to a boundary okay the next one here is Refraction of waves. Refraction of waves. Refraction means refraction of wave is the change in speed and direction of waves when it moves from one medium to another medium of different densities. So you now see the incoming ray and the refracted ray so this is the first medium this is the second medium this is the angle of incidence this is angle of refraction so this is angle of incidence i incoming ray p e. refracted ray r so you now see that there is a change in speed and direction at the second medium, medium B. That is to tell you that medium B is denser than medium A. What I mean by being denser is thicker. It's heavy. So you can see from the figure. Let's look at the next figure here. They still explain the same thing. So you see the direction of travel of the incident ray. And then the refracted ray. You see the angle. So this medium here is less dense than the second surface. Okay, so if light travels from a less dense medium to a denser medium, it tends to bend towards the normal. So this is the normal. You see that this light bends towards the normal here. But if light travels from, look at the arrow here, these are not the same figure also. You see the arrow here representing incident light, refracted light. Look at the arrow here telling you that this side is the incident light and this side is the refracted light. So you now see that when light travels from a denser medium to a less dense medium, it changes in speed and direction and it bends away 
from the norma. So when light travels from a less dense medium to a denser medium, it bends towards the norma. But when light travels from a denser medium to a less dense medium, it bends away from the norma. That's what that figure is telling us. From this figure, we can see. Okay, let's go to loss of refraction. We've said that refraction is the change in speed and direction of a wave when it moves from one medium to another medium of different densities. Okay, now loss of re refraction. Number one, the incident ray. I'm coming. Okay, loss of refraction. Number one, the incident ray, the refracted ray, and the normal at the point of incidence all lie on the same plane. The incident ray, the refracted ray, and the normal at the point of incidence all lie on the same plane. The incidence ray, the refracted ray, and the normal at the point of incidence all lie on the same plane. Okay. The second law states that for two given media, the ratio of the sign of the incident angle to the sign of the refracted angle is a constant. I come again. For two given media, this one and this, or this one and this, or let's consider this. This one is water and this is glass. This one is A and this is glass. So those are two different media. We have it that sine I over sine R gives us a constant which is called the refractive index. The refractive index does not have SI unit. So the first um, equation we have that n equals to sine i all over sine r equation one. We can as well define refractive index as the ratio of the velocities. So the velocity of light in the first medium all over the velocity of light in the second medium gives us refractive index two. We can as well compare this two also. All right. So the first equation we have here is that sine i over sine r gives us a constant, which is refractive index. And then this one, the velocity of light in the first medium all over the velocity of light in the second medium gives us also refractive index. So there are cases where the angles were not given, but the velocities were given. Uh, you won't say, oh, because you, you were given velocity, so mm -hmm. you can't find the refractive index as well. Okay. We also have it that N1 sine I equals to N2 sine R, where I is the incident angle and R is the refracted angle. And then the N1 here represents the 
refractive index for for the first medium and then the n2 here represents the refractive index for the second medium so assuming we have this to be n1 our n1 here is 1.33 our n2 here is 1.5 zero and then we have the incident angle to be 60 so if you are asked to find the refracted angle r all you need to do is to do a simple substitution With you, still with you. Okay. Okay, so from the figure, we have that. N1 sin i equals to N2 sin r. We also have that our N1 is equals to one point three three power N2 is don't forget that this N subscript one. So don't be confused about that this N subscript two. The same thing is applied here. For the sake of time, I will not be able to look for second thing. Okay, so N2 was or is 1.50 and our I, the incident angle is 60 degree. And we are to find R. Okay. So by substitution, we now pick in place of N1, which is 1.33, we now pick it in where we have N1. So here we will have one point three three. The next thing here is sign. We have sign here. Sign I. What is I? Sixty degrees. So now we place sixty equals to from the formula. Equals to then n two one point five zero one point five zero sine r. 
to the unknown here is R. We have this, we have this, we have this. We are looking for R. So we are going to divide both sides by 1.5. So we have that. One point three three and six two. <clears throat> All over. One point five. Zero. B equals to sign ah, but it's not proper keeping it this way, so I'm going to leave. And then I bring it to this side. So uh, <clears throat> Hope you are still with me. What do I do now? Let's see. Sign. Sign. Uh, equals to one point three three times six years is one point five years. And we are going to make uh, the subject so we remove or uh, divide both sides by sign. We will now have in this sign this value. So Okay. Uh, equals to inverse sign sign inverse and the power minus one in this one point three three and six two all the way. This will now give us uh, equal to in the sign
Oh, that's fine. 0 0.7679. 0 0.7679. Nine. And you press sign, uh, in the sign of this value using your calculator, you will have R equals to 50.1 degree. You can try that by yourself. In the course of doing that, you will get a better understanding okay so what's the final answer to that problem Okay, so this is the answer. Let's go ahead. This one says, if light travels from glass to A as shown in figure 18.2, I mean this figure below, then we use the expression. So from Snell's law, we have it that um, N equals the sign I, the incident ray all over the refracted ray. Now, we are saying that if the light is traveling in from a denser medium to a less dense medium, then we are going to simply say sine x. So in this case, look at the x here, sine x all over sine the refracted ray. It's still the same as the other one. So always look at this figure. It's very less x-ray. So the velocity also, velocity in the first medium, dx, all over velocity in the second medium, vy. Okay, all right. We move to the next one, total internal reflection. Total internal reflection. So, I think you can see clearly the figure here. This is a prism and this is the, the light source. We now see the incident light here. Yeah? Being incident on this prism at a particular angle. You look at here, if you have, look at here, you have zero degrees. This one is zero degree. Then from here to this other point is 10, 20 degrees, 30 degrees. 40 degrees, 50 degrees, 60, 70, 80, 90. The same is applicable to this side, 0, 10, 20, 30, and all of that. So this slide that is incident on this prism is at a particular angle. And at that particular angle, you now see that the light is reflected totally. So at this point, one may say total internal reflection has occurred. We are going to understand what we mean by total internal reflection. The figure we have here is similar to the drawings we are seeing here. So this figure here, this figure is the same as 
better antenna reflection. This diagram we are seeing here. Okay, let's come back. You now see this. These are two media. The first one here is glass, and the second one is A. This is a denser medium. This one is a less dense medium. What happens when light is uh, when light travels from a, a, a denser medium to a less dense medium, it moves away from the normal. You remember, I have said this before. So the alpha here in this case represents the incident angle and the beta here represents the, the refracted angle. Now, you see reflected rays here, but it's very weak. It's written here. So some of the, the rays of light do reflect even when refraction occurs, but it's not strong. Okay. So at this point, one can identify a particular angle. Yeah, you can measure this angle and tell somebody what it is. Now, if this angle is increased, like we have here, assuming this angle was 20, then you now decide to increase it to 30. That's what you are seeing here. So if this angle is increased, what you observe is that the ray of light that travel from the ray of light that travel from the incident, the refracted ray, the refracted ray will also move close to the boundary here. So the more you increase the incident angle, the wider the refracted angle. It gets to a particular angle whereby if you increase the incident angle, all the ray would fall in between the two media, which is the glass and, and the A. So at that point, you have the refracted angle to be 90 degree. Where you have the refracted angle to be 90 degree, you call this uh, particular angle of incidence the critical angle. So what is critical angle? Critical angle is simply the angle of incidence in the denser medium when the, the refracted angle in the less dense medium is 90 degrees. Let me go down so that we, we stay with me. Critical angle, the angle of incidence in the denser medium, when the refracted angle in the less dense medium is 90 degrees. The angle of incidence in the denser medium, this angle, when the refracted angle in the less dense medium is 90 degrees. At that point, you say that critical angle has occurred. So here you still have the weak ray and then the refracted ray is now running in between the glass and the A. If we increase this angle further, let's assume that the critical angle was, maybe call it 63. If we increase it, the incident light beyond that angle, say 63, and now increase to 50, as we have seen here. All you will observe is total internal reflection. So you now have a bright light here. It will not be as weak as it was before. And all the ray, the incident ray, will reflect 
totally. It reflects totally instead of refracting. Okay, so that te takes us, okay, so that takes us to our next definition, the total internal reflection. What is total internal reflection? Total internal reflection is the reflection of an incident ray of light at the interface between the medium of incidence and another medium of lower refractive index when the angle of incidence in the denser medium exceeds the critical angle. Total internal reflection is the reflection of an incident ray of light at the incidence between the medium of interface and another medium of lower refractive index when the angle of incidence in the denser medium exceeds the critical angle. Okay, so I I still have another question here for you. Remember this expression. Remember equation three. Equation three. N one sine i equals to N two sine r. N1 sin i equals to N2 sin r. So at critical angle, we replace instead of i, we now put c. Now put c here. So let's look at the c here. That c represents critical angle. So at critical angle, the refracted angle in the less dense medium is 90 degrees. <coughs> Sorry. Please don't forget. At critical angle, the value of the refracted angle is 90 degrees. So you can see in place of I here, now replace this, in place of R, replace 90. So 90 will give us one. So we now have that N sine C equals to one. So we can write this expression as N sign C equals to one. If we are to make if we are to make N the subject, then we will have that N equals to One, one all over sine C. And if we are to make C, or sine C the subject of C, we will now have the C equals to one all over n. Okay. So a critical angle in this equations O. A critical angle we have what's all this? If C is given, 
we will use this to find the refractive index. And if n, the refractive index is given, we will use this expression to find c. So let's assume that we have um, something like this. This is the normal. This is the critical angle C. Okay. All right. Um, let's look at this one here. So N here is one point five zero. Five zero. All right. And you are asked to find the critical angle. All you need to do is remember this one here has 90 degree, the refracted ray here. So this 90 degree, everything here has reduced to one. You now have one over n. So the n here is for the denser medium up here. So all you need to do is just to continue one over um, 1 1.5, 1 1.50. 1.50 is still the same thing as 1.5. When you divide this by, when you divide one by 1 1.5, you have sign C equals to let me check my calculator zero point six six zero point six seven at this point since we are looking for C we will now say C equals to inverse sign of zero point zero point six seven. With you, you can as well apply it and check what will be your answer. Zero point six seven. Then so you have forty two. Forty two degrees. So that is the refractive index. If this were to be your question, so that's how to calculate refractive index. Let's go back to the main screen. <clears throat> okay, study question. Before I get to that point, I think I have I've seen a figure here. This is glass, this is water. I would like you to solve this problem. The answer is 63 degree. Let's try to see how you can solve it. Then we move down to the study question. What is the critical angle for light traveling from Water to A, the refractive index of water to be 1.33. What is the critical angle for light traveling from water to A? That's the question. Okay, so we are asked to find the critical angle, but we have been given the refractive index of water. So if we use equation 5, you try that by yourself. This is equation five. 
this one is given 1.33. So you will now substitute that 1.33 into n. And then let's see the subject the same way I have done the other one. And then check what your answer would be. You can even drop a message there on the comment section. So let me try to save time. Total, oh, sorry, applications of total internal reflection. Applications of total internal reflection. Where do they use total internal reflection? You see, binoculars. These binoculars are astronomical telescopes. So this is an example of prism binocular. This is the human eye. This is the telescope. It makes use of uh, total internal reflection. You will now see the prism inside. Let's see, one, two, three, four. <coughs> Okay, so you now see the prism inside. <laughs> when light travels from this way, look at this is the objective lens. When light travels from here, it reflects totally, reflects totally until it gets to the human eye. reflects until it gets to the human eye. So one application of total internal reflection is in the construction of the prismatic binocular telescope. We also apply it in what they mean by periscope. Periscope. You see the figure of periscope here? What's a periscope? It's an instrument or a device used to, to view distance objects. Maybe if you have an obstacle blocking you like a mountain, in the case of a, a, a going for a battle, like you are in the war front and you intend to see what is ahead of you, then you can make use of this. You see one prism here, look at another one. It's a ray of light from the object who now reflect totally until it gets to the eye of the viewer. So this is very good. Look at it very well. It does not make any use of lenses. There are no lenses here. It's only prism that you see in the periscope. In case you you see questions like that. Which of the following instruments do not make use of lenses? You should know the kind of instruments. A periscope uses prism. There's no lens here. Okay, let's go to the next option. Optical fiber. Optical fiber. So this is an example of an optical fiber. This is a cable. And this cable has an outer jacket strength member. It has coating. It has cladding. And then the core. This cable works under the principle of total internal reflection. I think that is how far I can go on the introduction to waves. I think that is how far I can go on this topic. So please, if you enjoyed my class, if you enjoyed this session, please, I just want you to subscribe to our channel. In order to encourage us to do more, just click on the like button and also share. This is Supreme Online Lecture. I really appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. Even before I pray, the whole family see and start me. So they should do the